want to make this video. There are three reasons why the player's voice is so important and we really need to take advantage of this time to put those new council members in order. Let's look at our first point. We're going to talk about farming and bottlenecks. Now, we might remember this time last year before, before the player voice took place, a lot of us were struggling with the game. Right, so you think about a new player who's struggling, they can't make any advancement. All the information they've got on the internet is negative. You can't play this game without spending money, people would tell them. All the way up to the end game player, right? The end game player is struggling. Why? They said the characters were coming out too fast. There were too many bottlenecks. There wasn't any way to progress. It just felt like people were stuck in the mud, spinning their wheels, and they weren't having any fun. That was a sentiment last year before the player voice was able to kick in. What about now? What about today? Well, I think we'd agree that things are very different now. Gear and other bottlenecks have been smoothed out, right? Even more recently, they've revamped blue gear yet again, giving people big drops, big chunks, so they can bypass that bottleneck if they don't have thousands upon thousands of orbs saved up. And again, those of us at the end game, similar, similar things, right? If we have to target farm something, the drops are a lot bigger. They're giving us gear in the events that are appropriate for the characters that we're currently building. So that's pretty cool. Um, gold, right? Gold has pretty much been smoothed out. We don't have to worry about, generally speaking, if we have enough gold. It's only now at the end game where gold becomes an issue. Otherwise, training materials and end game gear are the actual bottlenecks as it should be. And that allows people, again, to, to move forward quicker, progress quicker, and catch up at a reasonable pace. Character shards, right? Character shards are more available. Uh, in the past, if you missed a character, it could be a year uh, before you got a hold of them. And on that note, the team doesn't work, right? If you're missing a character for the entire year, that, that team is just simply obsolete. It doesn't work. But now Scopely, through the help of the community and the player voice, has streamlined that process. So now you get your character shards quicker. Uh, you're going to get them at a predetermined time, about six months, right? They'll be farmable. They're saying you should have that character tuned up at that time. So even if you miss them, uh, they're giving them to you in advance. They're putting them on nodes for people to farm. And again, for the new players, you're able to get a hold of some of the strongest characters that exist. And that moves their account forward much, much quicker. I do have one quote that we'd like to show. So this here is a member who commented on a video and he says that he's able to do incursion one and is currently able to auto the mutant and the bio nodes. He thinks his Pegasus team is going to work out as well. His characters are in about the 65 to 70 range. Now, I know this individual is not a boosted account. Okay, this individual does not have a boosted account and he's able to do incursion one. So when we talk about catch up mechanics, that's what's happening. Right. If you're familiar with the channel or oh, we do a new account here. So last year I did a new account for an entire year. I was not able to get into an incursion one. For the whole year, this individual, he's a little bit ahead of me in progression. So we'll say he's less than six months in is able to do nodes in incursion. So it's working. Things are happening. This is proof that the adjustments that have already been made are coming to fruition. And again, this is not a boosted account. This is the normal progression. He's not spending money. He is uh, an advanced player. He knows how to play the game. But this is what's happening. These are things that have been smoothed out within the progression system. We see that it is working. Let's move on to our second point. Our second point has to do with the validity of the organization, right? We know there's some controversy. People say, well, is this really the player's voice or is this the Kraken voice, right? We've heard that argument uh, multiple times. And I think we have a very, very good example of why it is definitely the player voice. Uh, let's think back to, uh, let's think back for a minute to the uh, apocalypse adjustments, right? So the path to apocalypse unlocking the horsemen teams we remember there was an initial revision that said okay they changed the point structure and you had to use so-and-so characters 
to get so-and-so points. And people thought that that was good. They thought that was progress. Well, there was another portion of the community that said, no, this is actually a bad change. In order for me to do that, I have to build up the same old teams that don't do anything. Right? I have to build up four teams that don't do anything. And the in-game economy doesn't really support that. Right? If you have to build up 20 characters that you're not using that aren't doing anything, it's a lot of resource. And that's before we even get to the horseman teams themselves. So there was a split. Pardon, there was a split in the community. So on the one side, you had the vocal members, some of the more prominent members of the community, some who are more recognized in the creation community that said that that is fine, that that initial revision is fine and that will do. And you had a bunch of other individuals over here who are newish to mid game players who are saying, no, it's not fine. Right. They're the ones who are in the midst of it. And they were saying that this isn't going to work. Right. See, the elder players forgot what it was like. They forgot that we were upset when there were two characters, Phantom X and Scarlet Witch, that didn't do anything. We felt forced to build them. We forgot. Now that we want the newer character, newer player to build 20 characters that they can't use. So the arguments ensued. You saw them in various platforms. Uh, it happened even in, within the player voice discord, which is good because that means that people were watching and people could see. So then what was the resolution? Well, player voice encouraged Scopely to make the change in favor of the newer players, to add and widen more individuals, more characters, more traits to those nodes so newer people and mid-game people could participate. Why did that happen? Well, it's because this is truly the player voice. They wanted the players as a whole to be better. And so... They asked Scopely to make that adjustment. And note, Scopely changed quickly. It only took a couple of days, and those changes were made. Why? Well, part of the reason is because, again, within the player voice, in the player voice discord, there were solutions given, right? People weren't just asking for a free ride. They said, well, how about this? How about that? They added, so they, they gave solutions. And Scopely, as a company, was inclined to listen to that. Why? Because again, there's there's solution. And people aren't just asking to get stuff for free. Work still has to be done. People still had to put uh, effort in and they were able to do that. They are able to do that. And people are working towards apocalypse. Again, last year, I was not able through a year of play to unlock apocalypse. We'll see what happens this year. Point number three. Point number three is the fact that the player voice organization exists, right? The fact that they exist and have a relationship with Scopely is huge. It is proof that Scopely wants their game to do well because many companies, many successful companies have some type of community arm, some type of community liaison that they work with. That's what makes the company successful. Uh, maybe you've been on some type of a, a tour like maybe you went like to a winery or something like that or, or a uh, car manufacturer, some type of factory. Maybe they make food, candy, toys. Maybe you've went to their facility and were given a tour, right? They usually ask for your feedback. Uh, they even point to you websites and things like that that you can go to and talk more about the product. They ask for feedback on said product. They encourage, again, people to meet up, to communicate. They even have sponsored Meetups. I just listened to a guy the other day. He was talking about Lego. Right? He was talking about Lego. They have these, these Lego meetups. There's these social media posts where children, they, they built something. Adults, they built something. Uh, you can vote for, I uh, think, uh, models for them to make and build. Now, why are we bringing all this up? Because this is the mark of a successful company. And we know there's been some great changes within Scopely. So the fact that they're willing to deal with the player voice and the fact that the player as a whole has offered up so much good information that has been implemented shows that this is on the right track. And we want individuals to participate in it, individuals that will be good and, and speak up for various members of the community. Perhaps that's you. Perhaps that's you. But in either case, we want to make sure that the fact we, we don't want to lose uh, sight of the fact that since the player voice exists, 
and they're working the way they are with Scopely, it shows that it is important. And if the company takes it seriously, they want their game to succeed. And obviously the best way to do that is to be more and more in touch with the needs of their community. So that brings us to a bonus point. We have a bonus point, a fourth point. And that point is a question, what do you have to offer? So if you think perhaps that you'd be good, that you'd, you'd work well on that council, or that you maybe notice something unique, a, a point that isn't being served in the game, or maybe you just want to take the baton and say, now it's my turn and take the baton and run with it and make forward the advancements that are already there. If you have good communication skills, you love the game, go ahead and get involved. Put your name in the hat. Ask around, ask some of the other people to, as to what it entails to see whether you uh, would benefit from that or not. In the meantime, if you don't think it's for you, just stay involved. Get on the Player Voice Discord. The link's in the description on this video. It's in the description of all Gideon XL videos because I love the Player Voice. So come in if you're not familiar with it. Sometimes it's as simple as there's just little polls that you can vote for. Did you think that this was a good idea or a bad idea? They have things as simple as what characters would you like to come to the game? What costumes do you think would be good? You can talk about does the character work properly or not? How was the unlock for this certain event? I'm in a couple focus groups. I'm in a focus group for the new player community. I'm in one for Alliance War. I enjoy talking about both. And through the community, right? It's not me. Through the community interactions, some of the discussions that we've seen, we've seen some of that stuff come to fruition. It's been really good. It's been really good. So I encourage you, take advantage of this time. Think about it. Maybe put your hat in the ring if you want to be on the council. But if not, just get involved. Just jump into the Player Voice Discord. Find an area of the game that you like, that you want to talk about, and do that. The company's listening. Scopely's listening. And through the community, through the Player's Voice, we can make this game that we all love even better. Peace.